Father's Day. It's a joy to be in God's presence this morning and to celebrate His faithfulness. Our Lord God is faithful. He remains so faithful. Even times that we fail Him, He is faithful. And so we are here to celebrate His love, to celebrate His grace. Thank you all for coming. I invite you to join me in our call to worship, which is um, responsive. which is also projected on the screen. 
Our call to worship is based on Acts chapter 2, verse 17 through 21. God will pour out the Spirit on all flesh, and our daughters and sons shall prophesy. Our old ones shall dream dreams, and our young ones shall see visions. And all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Come, let us call upon the Lord. Let us pray together. Come, Holy Spirit, renew the whole creation. Send the wind and flame of your transforming life to lift up the church in this day. Give us wisdom and faith that we may know the great hope to which we are called. Come, Holy Spirit. Give our life. Sustain your creation. Confront us with our greedy, consuming of your gifts. Stand before us as we pillage and, and destroy. Call us forth into new harmonies of care for all who live and breathe and have their being. Come, Holy Spirit. Spirit of truth, set us free to emerge as children of God. Open our ears that we may hear the weeping of the world. Open our mouths that we may be a voice for the voiceless. Open our eyes that we may see your vision of peace and justice. Make us alive with the courage and faith of your prophetic truth. Come, Holy Spirit. Spirit of unity, reconcile your people. Give us the wisdom to hold to what we need to be your church. Give us the grace to lay down those things that you can do without. Give us a vision of your breadth and length and height to challenge our smallness of heart and bring us humbly together. Come. Holy, Spirit. Holy Spirit, transform us, sanctify us as we take up this tax in your name. Give us the gifts we need to be your church in spirit and in truth. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with worship through songs. Please stand if you are able.
seated. Welcome to worship at Monocacy Valley Church on Sunday, June 18th. If you're here in the sanctuary, please join us for a coffee and fellowship <laughs> time in the cafe immediately after worship. Next Sunday, June 25th, we'll be installing our new elders on consistory. Our first fruits campaign for June consists of donor's choice. So bring food that you would like a family in the summer to enjoy for lunch or dinner. The Monday evening fellowship and Bible study meets tomorrow evening, June 19th at 7 p.m. Our virtual online prayer ministry meets via Zoom Tuesdays at noon. Please speak with Pastor Isaiah if you would like to be added to the list. We have two online Bible studies. The men will have their final session of the year on June 24th, that's next Saturday morning at 8.30 a.m. Following that, the men will take a hiatus until the fall. We'll also be looking to include more guys in our Bible study. Don't worry, we aren't going to make you memorize the 23rd Psalm or anything like that. It's just a good way to discuss issues out of Scripture that are current and topical. The women will meet next on Thursday evening, July 20th at 7 p.m. We welcome your contributions to the ministries and missions of MVC via our Tide Lee online giving site. This is especially important for our YouTube congregation. It's easy to sign up for Tide Lee 
and you can give safely and securely. And now, as we return to worship, we will celebrate our biological and spiritual fathers. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And happy Father's Day, if people haven't said that, if someone hasn't said that to you before. Yes, we are all here. We all have something in common, and that is we all have fathers. Some of the thoughts of our fathers bring joy and uh, maybe even laughter. And in some cases, maybe the thoughts of our dads um, bring sadness or um, even grief or despair. But this morning we're here. We're going to be praying for all fathers, both biological and spiritual fathers. So please bow with me. For fathers everywhere who have given us life, for new fathers, long-time fathers, for fathers yet to be, and fathers soon to be, for fathers who have lost a child through death, for stepfathers who have assumed that role with love and joy, who have loved the children of another as their own and created a new family, for adoptive fathers who have claimed the orphan and loved the once unwanted as a precious gift from God. For men, though without children of their own, have acted like a father and have nurtured and cared for others' children. For fathers who have been unable to be a source of strength, who have not responded to the needs of their children or have not sustained their families. For fathers who struggle with temptation, violence, or addiction, for those who do harm, and for those whom they have harmed. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless all men that they may be strengthened in their role as fathers. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, honor them always, and grant this as we offer this prayer to you, Abba, the greatest father of all. Amen. And now, please enjoy this video, after which we will take um, our offerings and our tithes this morning. For all the tears you wiped away, for all the years you gave to me, for all the wisdom you spoke with care, for all the moments we made together, for all the hugs you knew I needed, for all the nights you waited up for me, for all the times you showed me what a great dad is, for all the memories I'll never forget. Thank you. the dads, our greatest teachers, our favorite heroes, our closest friends, and our biggest fans, our dads. This time we'll receive our tithes and offerings. <coughs> Love in the dead. 
so unexplainable I, I can hardly think as you call Aika, uh -oh. see what I got. Can you read that for me, please? Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. You know, this morning I was thinking of um, praying with you, focusing on Proverbs chapter three, verse three which talks about God's faithfulness. And here is what Ms. Marsh, uh, Nancy gave to me from Proverbs chapter three. So it's God speaking to me. God speaking to me. But Proverbs three, three talks about God's faithfulness. God is very faithful. He is always God. And he will always be God. And so we have to trust him. Because he is a faithful God, God is good. Are you listening? Are you being good? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so we have to trust God, we have to rely on God, and we pray that you also will be faithful. So how can you be faithful, Rebecca? Do you know? Faithful, always tell the truth. Keep your word. Okay? Keep God's word. Be faithful to God. Shall we pray? Well, <clears throat> loving Father, we thank you so much for giving us yet another day. As we celebrate you as our Lord and Savior, we also ask that you will equip us to remain faithful to you, to love you with our whole heart, mind, and soul, to make you the subject of our lives, and to worship you daily in our hearts. Thank you for this day, and we ask for your blessings even for our children as they continue with worship. Be with them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That is what happened. They were at Keys Games yesterday, so <laughs> just working up. For our scripture reading this morning, I invite you to turn with me to Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. Acts 
Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, verse 1 through 11, I read. But a man named Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property, and with his wife's knowledge, he kept back for himself some of the proceeds and brought only a part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep for yourself part of the proceed of the land? Why it remained unsold? Did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? Why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to man but to God. When Ananias heard these words, he fell down and breathed his last. And great fear came upon all who heard of it. The young man rose and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. After an interval of about three hours, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter said, tell me whether you saw the land for so much. And she said, yes, for so much. But Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out. Immediately, she fell down at his feet and breathed his la her last. When the young men came in, they found her dead and they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And great fear came upon the whole church and upon all who heard of these things. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you so much for your loving kindness. You loved us so much. You love us. You love us. You watch over us. You shower down your blessings upon us. You have given us life and life through your son, Jesus Christ. A gift that can never be taken away from us. A gift that is lasting. We thank you. Thank you for your word given to us to guide us, instruct us, a great companion for us to live in this world. Your word is life and is alive. And we ask that you will use these words to illumine and inspire us. Even as we gather today, Father, we thank you for all the saints who are worshiping now all over the world. Thank you for uniting us with them in worship of you, the only true God. We think of those who are suffering because of their faith in you. Many are persecuted, hunted down, imprisoned, and some their lives taken away. Lord, we remember them and we ask that you will restore peace in your church and peace on earth. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you called disciples and prayed for them to be joined in faith. We pray for Christian churches from which we are separated 
that let us never be so sure of ourselves that we condemn the faith of others or refuse reunion with them, but make us ever ready to reach out for more truth so that your church may be one in spirit through Jesus Christ. Thank you for the recently concluded RCA Synod for the decisions reached. We pray that you will keep us one. Loving Father, we thank you for the life of our congregation that even on Friday, Promising Horizons Learning Center sent out another group of young ones who will start first grade in the fall. We thank you for the testimonies from parents, from teachers. And we ask that, Father, you will provide more resources to us to open this place up for families, for ministry. Thank you for everyone that is working so hard, those who support this ministry and other ministries of the church, such as Frederick Food Bank, those who take care of this building, our elders, deacons, Lord, would you please bless them? We grieve with John and Jenny over the sudden death of John's sister. Please make them, help them to make sense of that passing. For these and other concerns, we bring them before you knowing that you are a God who answers us. And we trust that you have heard us and have answered us because we ask in your name. And together, all God's people say, Amen. Um, we have not seen, it's a quick announcement, we haven't seen uh, John and Jenny for a long time. Uh, yesterday she tried to reach me and I missed a call from her. She did not leave a message, but this morning Nancy told me of the sad news of John's sister's passing. So for niece or oh, niece's passing. So keep them in your prayers. As a church, we have been reflecting on the personality of the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? This morning, I would like us to look at uh, the discerning power of the Holy Spirit, the discerning power of the Holy Spirit. This pertains to the judicial operation of the Holy Spirit. We notice this in this historic chapter, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. A very sad chapter. This chapter shows us the discerning power of the Holy Spirit. That power is operative in the life of believers. It should be in you as well, in all of us. That power is not left hanging in the air, but is operative in us. God has given us that power to the church. The descending power of the Holy Spirit is the true mark of a believing church. Somehow, Acts chapter 5 relates with Genesis chapter 3. If you go back to Genesis chapter, the first two chapters of Genesis, there is creation, there is joy, everything is happening, then boom, sin. 
You see that here. The early church started very well. Things were going on smoothly. Lives were changed, transformation. Things were moving on. Then this story. If you look at Acts chapter 1, Christ ascended to heaven and he promised his apostles the gift of the Holy Spirit. So the disciples waited in Jerusalem. They were waited, I mean they waited, they waited in Jerusalem for that event. And Act chapter 1 concludes with the replacement of Judas Iscariot. This is the Judah who betrayed Jesus Christ. That story is also connected to Acts chapter 5. If you look at Acts chapter 2, we read about the public manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the day of Pentecost. Unique on that day is the conversion of about 3,000 people. Things were going very well, going very well. 3,000 converted. Then move to Acts chapter 4, verse 32. You see this happening. Say, now the full member of those who believe were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. Kononia, fellowship. Everyone. Verse 33, and with great power the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and a great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceed of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as they had need. Notably, Joseph, who was also called the apostles, who was called by the apostles Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, a Levite, a native of Cyprus. He sold the field that belonged to him and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Ananias and Sapphira, they saw, they noticed that event. They recognized that. You see the essence of the church. There was love, there was joy, there was fellowship. A whole community knit together by the power of the Holy Spirit. Then came a man named Ananias. Ananias and Sapphira. Another Judah Iscariot. That is the connection. Another connection with the story of creation. In Genesis chapter 3, the entrance of sin. But it's more than the Judah issue. It's more than the Judah. It shows the, perp- the issue of imperfection. In the early church, imperfection. Imperfection in Christian community. You know, sometimes we presume that the church is a perfect group of people. Or those who come here ought to be perfect. Or we want to relate with those who are only perfect. Conversely, this chapter is not condoning the idea of imperfection. No, that is not what this is about. The early church, going on, things are going very well. Then look at what happened. Ananias with Sapphira. The notion of imperfection in the early church does not teach us to condone wrongful practices, but to remove its seeds among us. And this issue affected the progress of the work. You see how the scriptures are intertwined. You go back to Joshua chapter 7. Joshua is marching. He is conquering the nations, conquering the nations. Then chapter 7, what happened? Achan took the forbidden word, cloth, things that were forbidden. Go back to Joshua chapter 7. 
nobody knew what happened. Then they marched against a small city of Ai. They were defeated. Many casualties. And Joshua rent his clothes and cried to God, what happened? Say, well, the problem is in your house. Go find out. Like in the story of Achan, Anania's story is the first recorded setback in the early church. And the apostles dealt with it decisively. They removed that from their community. You look at Ananias' dishonesty. He, has, he and his wife conceived the wrong idea. They planned and executed it. If you look at verse 1, it says, But Ananias, a man named Ananias, with his wife Sapphira, sold a piece of property. And with his wife's knowledge, he kept back for himself some of the proceeds and brought only a part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10 says what? Money is the root of what? All evils. It doesn't condemn money. We need money. I need it to expand Promising Horizons Learning Center. <laughs> but money is the root of all evil. He sold it. Why did they do this? Why did they do this? We can speculate on many reasons behind their actions. They were dishonest to start with. And that stemmed from a lack of commitment to Christ. In the church of Jesus Christ, there are many people who, people who are following the crowds, following the crowd, the crowds, crowd, without following Christ. Lack of commitment. You see, they had every reason to keep a portion for themselves. It was appropriate for them to keep back. If you look at verse 4a, where Peter asked them, why it remained on so did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? They had the freedom to use their resources the way they wanted. They were not compared or required. This was supposed to be a voluntary communal practice. What was in a, inappropriate for Ananias and Sapphira was the lie. And Peter told them, look, you haven't lied to me. You are just lying to God. You lied to God. You lied to the Holy Spirit. But if you look at verse 3, you look at the reason behind what, why they did that. Why? The concept contrived in, in, in Greek is like you have given your soul to Satan to use you. Why did you give your soul to Satan to use you? Verse 3. Why is it that you have contrived in this deed in your heart? Problem is the heart. They gave their hearts and soul to Satan instead of God. <laughs> they wanted fame. They wanted fame. If you look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, the last verse of chapter 4 says what? Joseph, who was also called by the apostles Barnabas, a Levite, a native of Cyprus, verse 37, sold the field that belonged to him and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. The only person whose name is mentioned in the colonia, the community, the fellowship, is Barnabas. Maybe Ananias and Sapphira wanted their names to be recognized, isn't it? We want legacies, we want legacies, we want legacies, we want legacies. And this, these things are without, there are people who prefer earthly legacy, which is not bad. Some people will go a long way to make that happen. But using dubious ways to make it happen is wrong. 
Ananias and Sapphira, they wanted recognition. They were greedy. They kept a portion of the proceeds for themselves. They misunderstood the intent and purpose of Christian community. We see that happening today, isn't it? In many ways, when we set up ministry for our pockets. Set up ministry for our pockets. Ministries. Elaborate Christians or ministry which end up being just scam. There was, there was one in the news recently. Christian group came up with a fancy healthcare system. Then collected over millions, millions, millions. I'm not judging them, but these are the examples. Convert church property to personal use or take advantage of people to enrich ourselves. Ananias and Sapphira were those people. They did not know the power of the Holy Spirit. They did not know that the Holy Spirit perceives thoughts, both our own thoughts as well as the thoughts of others. The Holy Spirit judges opinions, decisions, and feelings. And here you see the discerning power of the Holy Spirit, which is our focus here, the discerning power of the Holy Spirit, which is in two broad ways. One, Peter's perception. And the question is, how did he know? How did he know that they were dishonest? The Holy Spirit working in Peter. So with that, Peter was able to examine, well, Ananias and Sapphira, we know that you have a piece, 11 acres here. And so, is this, does this match those 11 acres? This power of discernment, the power of discernment, the power of discernment. If you operate in the spirit, then you can discern the thoughts of others, make judicious decisions as well. One of our friends once told her pastor, you better be careful with your words. I have followed you. I have listened to you. Anytime you say something against anybody, it comes, it harms them. So be careful with your words. That is a case of someone who is controlled and led by the Spirit. That his perception or his or her own perception, insight, aligns with the Holy Spirit. And you see this mentioned in 1 Corinthians 13. I will just mention this chapter. I will read it without um, commenting. Say, now there are varieties of gifts by the same Spirit, and there are varieties of service by the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. Verse 7, to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for common good. The reason is sometimes we don't use it. We don't. We don't use it. Verse 8 says what? For to one is, for the one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom. And to another, the utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit. And to another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one spirit. To another, working on miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the ability to separate between spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. Each one of us, each one of us is given a spirit. The reason is sometimes we forget or we don't tap in, we don't use it. So the, whole, the Holy Spirit granted Peter knowledge and wisdom on all these things. The Holy Spirit grants us gift for use in ministry. And you can also acquire this resource. Keep in mind, or let's refer back to last week in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21 which was the subject of our discussion last week. In that verse, Peter says this, For no prophecy ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were what? Carried by the Holy Spirit. 
This is the same Peter who looked at Ananias and told Ananias, why are you lying to the Holy Spirit? You are not telling the truth. You are very dishonest. It's the power of the Holy Spirit operating in Peter that led him to recognize that this family was dishonest. Peter's action was not magic, but the result of daily working with the Holy Spirit, daily in the shadow of the Holy Spirit. Peter lived by word and spirit, and we can do the same, and exercise the same power. We can attain this level when we open up ourselves to the indwelling power, to the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And we need this power. We need this power. On many occasions, Miss Masha is not here. Even last week, we received this occasion. Oh, John was here. When someone was stop by with a handout of things that he or she needs and maybe directed that the church should do for them. You look at it, you listen, you listen, you listen, and sometimes it makes sense. You know that they are telling the truth. But sometimes we need more information before we can help. And sometimes you know outrightly that, well, this is just, it doesn't make sense. But for the sake of the gospel, we work with those people instead of sending them away. Sometimes we show them to some of the resources available in our community. The second way we see the, the discernment of the Holy Spirit through Peter's action is Peter's appropriation of the Holy Spirit. Peter used the power of the Holy Spirit to cleanse the church. And this was direct at verse 4, you have not lied to man but to God. When Ananias heard these words, he fell down and breathed his last. Sweet judgment. Peter acted in the power of the Spirit to carry out this action. The Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit being God is eternal. He knows everything. The Holy Spirit is wisdom. This Honesty, falsehood, untruth told to the Holy Spirit is a lie to God. So God and the Holy Spirit are the same. As God, the Holy Spirit descends our thoughts, descends our thoughts, descends our thoughts. And this is the same thing that happened to Sapphira. After an interval of about three hours, his wife came in. Not knowing what had happened, Peter said to her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yes, for so much. She was given an opportunity to confess. If she was in the Holy Spirit, she would have understood the question. And she said, yes, willing concession to the plan. You see, friends in the Lord... We cannot deceive God. The Holy Spirit will always reveal that. And the Holy Spirit will always reveal us. Peter spoke in the power of the Spirit. So believers endowed with the Spirit, we do the same. Friends in the Lord, um, the descending power of the Holy Spirit is an incentive to be honest with one another. Honest with one another. I was disappointed with myself. I asked myself, do you think I'm a, I'm a fool to accept your story? It's not right. The descending power of the Holy Spirit is an incentive for true, genuine fellowship with God yeah. Watch out for those who come to you telling you prophecies. This is what the Holy Spirit has said about you. He will talk to you directly. I never accept any prophecy from people. It's a different thing when I'm praying with other people and on the same topic, I share with them 
maybe after some time they were telling me that this is what is happening. You, we, this is what the Lord is leading me about. This issue, we can sit and discuss, but be careful with people who come to you, they tell you what the Holy Spirit is showing them about you when the Holy Spirit has not already communicated that to you. Amen? Let us rely on the Holy Spirit. If you are in the Spirit, you with the Holy Spirit will communicate with you. You will discern the thoughts of others. You know it. God has given us the spirit of wisdom, not the spirit of intimidation. Keep in mind 1 Corinthians chapter 13. To each one of us is given a spirit. And let us reactivate that spirit and live in the power of that spirit. Let us pray. Loving God, pour your Holy Spirit upon us for some of us. Revive your work in us. Use us in the power of your Holy Spirit to understand you, know you, and live faithful to you. In your name we pray, and together all God's people say, Amen. Would you please stand for our closing song?
grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. And together, all God's people say, Amen. Go home in peace. Unwavering.